You're listening to the Pittsburgh Pile Driver. What the hell is that? Podcast. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Who's that fellow with the dirty bum? I'll leave that up to you to decide. But, uh, what are we talking about? Oh, wrestling. We're going to talk wrestling. I'm going to adjust the headphone in my ear because it doesn't stay in very well because I have weird-shaped ears. Uh, we're going to talk other things, too, like the weird shape of my ears. Hi, everybody. It's the Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast, allegedly. I'm your host, Ransom the Madman, alongside my cohorts in crime, Beef the Legend, Tiger Bomb Tom, Poot the Bard, the uh, gimmick stealer himself, because good lord, come up with your own original shit every once in a while. Your name is the Bard after all, but no, no, let's just rip everybody else off. Go fuck themselves. Um, yeah, I feel like crap. Maybe a cold. Maybe the cooties. I couldn't care less either way. I just want to talk some wrestling and rant and rave and yell at the people that are my friends and make them feel bad about themselves. Because that's what makes me feel better before we talk whatever the hell you schmoes have to talk about because i'm going to be honest i've been feeling like crap all week and have not given two single shits about wrestling but one thing i did see is that uh our good friend uh there's a brisk breeze our good friend cox suckman that did some did some touting about how the nephew of one Dolph Ziggler has recently signed on with Control Your Narrative. Are people like is this is this what's happening now? Like are people legit still doing that? I thought I thought it was so terrible that that p- enough people would see it and go, uh oh, no, this is stupid. I got to get the hell out of here. But people are like, like, are still going to that thing. Wrestlers are still going to stupid control your narrative. Really? So fucking wrestling fight club. Who's the nephew of Dolph Ziggler? I don't know. Some yeah. some dude. That that's my fucking question. I mean, his brother his brother was an a, was an AW for a minute. Is he uh, still in or no? Uh, I haven't <sighs> seen him for a minute. Uh, but I don't watch Dark and that, so he might be on Dark. Okay. Um, Did you just say in that? I did, and that. Oh boy, um, you've got to wake up and drink your healthy protein. Stop being dum dum juice, because don't say that. We are the no, Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast, and I feel like we got to represent the Pittsburgh a little more. No, we don't have to. We don't have to sound like people from there. Like Get sound better, do it better, <laughs> be smarter, be better than them. Uh no, he's he's he looks. Uh, I wish I would have sent the thing in the group chat, but like he's he's buffed up he's a muscly dude uh he's a good looking kid uh looks quite young but regardless of the fact uh that he's Dolph Ziggler's nephew and we don't know who he is but that's not the point the point is is that really there's still people that are joining this shit show the paycheck bro like there is it who's paying them uh ec3 adam Schur. And whoever uh, the other so they, fucking they, just, they have independent wealth. I don't know what the fuck. I mean, somebody's. So, like, are you you're aware how promotional booking works with independent wrestling, right? Like, you know, yeah. Warner Warner Media doesn't own the entire IWC. Like, no, sure. like bookers put on shows. They charge a fee per head to hopefully recoup some of their money back. And you know we'll big we'll we'll bring in big draws to get interest. Well, this is that to eleven. Um, they're hoping that hey, we're all big name. And, you know, let's be real; they are all big name talent. Um, EC3 being a former Impact champion, uh, Adam Sure being a former WWE Universal champion. Uh, you know, Killer Cross, Austin Aries, all these guys have have pedigrees. You know. So, like, they ought to be able to charge some money to get into their show. But at the end of the day, they are the one. I, I, I think, unless there is, like, a hidden benefactor, which is always, you know, possibility. You know, EC3 could have went and pitched this to somebody else, and they'd be like, yeah, man, 
here's here's half a million dollars, and that's who's money they're playing with. Regardless, somebody's paying these wrestlers to come and wrestle for Control Your Narrative, and that's right. why they're doing it, man. I don't, you know, I honestly could give two fucks who wrestles for them. Good for them. Get paid. That that's that's what you're that's that's what you're out to do. Um, you know, and and hell, if you're gonna make your name by being a, a, a diamond in the rough, have at it, man. But um, you know, I I, I I certainly am not hoping for the success of this promotion because it's a bunch of fucking idiots, um, with 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 idiot views and just fucking idiots. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, individually, I'm hoping for the success of some wrestlers that work there. You know. Uh, so to answer your question, Dolph Ziggler's nephew. I just looked it up. Um, he uh, uh, he goes by AJZ uh, Andreas John Ziggler. Apparently, he's I don't know if he's uh, also dabbled in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling a little bit at one time or another. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's young. Uh, looks like he's I think his early twenties, and um, yeah. Yeah, so nephew of uh, one Dolph Ziggler and uh, Nick Nemeth. Uh, that is, well, no, that is Dolph Ziggler. Uh, yes, so, Ryan. yeah, him and Ryan, uh, Ryan, I believe, Ryan, thank be. you. Yeah, Ryan's is, Ryan would be his other uncle. Oh, so he's not, he's not like, he's not Ryan's kid either. He's just like, he's related to this. Interesting. I'm um, guessing. Well, because I mean, Dolph and, I don't know. I don't know whose fucking kid he is. Who so, cares? We don't need to did, speculate on it. So did he did, did he sign a contract or is he wrestling for them? Because those are two different things. I don't know. The article that I read, the, the headline article thing that I skimmed through said that Dolph Ziggler's nephew signed with uh, Control Your Narrative. But I didn't read into it to find out like what exactly that meant. Whether he signed will... a contract with them or signed on to do some shows i don't know i yeah i i will take that as a as a uh, grain of sand because like there are a lot of guys who have been attached to control your narrative who i don't like so for example they haven't even (laughs) mentioned any matches for their wrestlemania card which is taking place uh a week from tonight or tomorrow i don't remember but like there, there there are no matches listed um you know, which is dumb, you know, like, yes, I understand people are going to be in the area anyway, excuse me, but if you watch my show the other day, um, the other day, um, there's gonna be, like, fucking 40 shows happening that weekend. People are gonna have to decide what shows they wanna see and what shows they have no interest in, and man, like, if I see a lineup that has some some potential really good matches versus a show that has some names attached to it but no actual matches on the card. Fuck that. Uh, I'm I'm you know I, I well first of all I would I wouldn't give control of your narrative my business anyway. Um, you know fucking Braun Strowman's like we're not gonna have any goofy stupid gimmicks and you know suddenly they have a fucking guy in like some fucking like furry costume wrestling for them. It's it's. <laughs> It's you know oh we don't we we don't want flippers yet they have fucking Flip Gordon attached to them it's mm-hmm. it's it's all fucking stupid they can say no super kicks no destroyers or no t- t- you know t- t- tope suicidas but you know that somebody's gonna throw a fucking super kick or a tope suicida maybe not a destroyer because I understand that's a bit you know crazy but you know. A super kick is fucking why, Shawn Michaels move, you know? Why why do they say no super kicks and no destroyers? Because and, uh, that's because, part of their rules. That's part yeah. of control your narrative's bullshit rules. That, that's because, you know, fucking motherfuckers out there think that AEW <coughs> is terrible because they let people super kick and do Canadian destroyers out all, all the live long day, which, you know, I, I get it. Um, you know, sometimes psychology does get thrown out the window, but you know what? If it's a fun fucking match, who gives a fuck about ring psychology if at the end of the match you sit there and you go, you know what? I enjoyed that experience. Who gives a fuck whether the last move was a Canadian Destroyer, a Pepsi Plunge, a Super Kick, or a damn Brain Buster? Who they're gives a fuck? They're trying to stand out. That's what they're trying to do. Because no, they're trying to be edge lord counterculture jagoffs, and it's fucking working. It's yeah, fucking they're, working. They're trying to stand out. They're trying to separate themselves from other wrestling organizations by saying, 
here's our list of rules. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to control our narrative. First kind of control your narrative is that you control your narrative. Blah, 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 blah. No Canadian destroyers, no super kicks. No yeah. And then in two they're months, you're going to be talking about, in, in, in two months, you're going to be talking about building the best wall ever. The wall, their wall is going to have <laughs> those bricks ever. Oh and gosh. they're going to have fucking red hats that say, you know, control make your wrestling, narrative. Make wrestling yeah. great again. Make wrestling great, great again. Like this is the, absolute like and they're the kind of people that use the word sheeple but don't under, but don't understand that they're attracting that exact fucking like marks marks are just that they are marks is a fucking carny term that came from fucking carnivals who of people who are running rigged games that go that guy's a fucking mark bring him in here so i can s get all his money that's that's you know, their problem that's that their problem is they're, th this what they're producing is not sustainable. No, they, they can't. They can't survive on this. No, because no one's going to buy into this product. No, no one's well, going to buy into this product with this list of of BS rules. It's not going to happen. You're going to have the fringe minority that'll buy into it. Yep. But that's not going to carry your business. I it's, said it's before. Not, I'll say it again. It, it, it's going to be the lunatic fringe. It's going to well, yeah. be. Like the the, mark the, the my words. Absolute, like, Ambrose no. isn't going to control your narrative. Oh, no, stop right. that! Stop that! They, mark my words, the, though, it'll change because when they realize, yep. oh, the 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 fan base that we have on this product is so slim and small, they're going. The, their whole premise is going to change because they won't be able to sustain their business on that small amount of clientele. Well, you know so what's what funny is what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to change, and what they're going to change to is the same exact thing every other company is putting out there. They're going to get rid of these lists of BS things. You're going to see Tope Suicidos. You're going to see Super Kicks. You're going to see all that stuff because that's what the majority of people want to see, and that's who you need watching your business or getting your their eyes on your business is the majority of people. The lunatic fringe isn't going to support these guys. And and it's here's not. here's here's the problem. Like I, I and I and I try not to get too political, but these guys are like one hundred percent political agenda. Like they are appealing to like the crazy fucking like conservative conservative Republican crowd. And by the way, did you know that? And that this is not at all like you know uh, uh, the the. the they, the, those people that they are trying to get at, have notoriously uh, hard to open wallets. Like they're the kind of people that don't. They're, they're conservative for a reason because they don't want to spend money. You know who likes to spend spend money? Everybody else. People, people that are liberal with their money. People that will go to a fucking quote unquote T-shirt company and buy a hundred dollars worth of T-shirts at a clip and be like, you know what? I'm happy with my purchase. You know who's not going to do that? The people who go to these fucking control your narrative shows, they're going to see a, a t-shirt for $25 and they're going to go, eh, I, I already paid to get in. I bought, I bought a medium soda. I'm good. Thanks. You know, and that's, you know, that's, that's the sustainability of it. Like you said, Ransom, they're with, with this particular set of rules that they're running under with the talent that they have, the talent that they have and Again, I, I, I use the word talent very frivolously there. It's in quotation marks. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You see three Lexus quotation marks. They're, they're, talent they're in quotation, quotation marks. Oh, um, good Lord. They, they're, they're not going to be able to, to sustain this. And, and here's what's crazy is they already have a fucking like, deal with like some like wrestling TV or whatever on Pluto. I think it's on Pluto. We'll, we'll see how long that holds up. We'll, Give it we'll time. see. Give it time. Because cause, cause I guarantee you, I guarantee you that this gets a lot more political before it doesn't. And I guarantee you some shit comes out about like neo-Nazism or fascism, something. One of these guys is going to fucking slip up in a promo and it's going to be all over. Like someone's going to shit the bed real hard and that's going to be that. Here, Here's the thing. I am happy to discuss politics with people in a political discussion i am not happy to involve politics in my recreational activities fucking preach. i don't want politics in my wrestling i don't want politics in my tv shows or movies 
you the way that you can ruin a good movie for me get political in it yep i don't give a shit if it's political against the views that i have or political towards the views i have i don't want it to be political movie ruined series ruined goodbye i'm not coming back so that's a real quick way to ruin uh, your wrestling show and i can't be i can't be the only one who wants no. my entertainment to be separate from my politics so if that's what they're going to do if they're going to get political in their wrestling they they're going to not only are they not bringing in the fan base they need to they're going to alienate a whole other group of people who want to get away from the constant bickering and fighting that is politics and enjoy some wrestling. And if they can't do that because control your narrative is making their wrestling too political, that group of people that wants to get away from it and enjoy wrestling isn't going to watch. They're not doing good things. And let's not forget that Fight Club was written and filmed very much tongue in cheek. Like it, 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 it's not supposed to be put on this fucking like pedestal. And I mean, it's, it, it, it's a great fucking work of film. Like I, 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 I love, uh, Brad Pitt. I love that we're doing than that. They both kill it. Um, yes. everybody, it, it's a great movie. Okay. But it's sure. fictional characters. Like this is not something that people should be going, you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to base my belief system on this. This is like that episode of Family Guy where Peter uh, makes a church to the fawns. You know, like yeah. this is exactly yep. what that feels like where someone takes something that's fictional. And, and I, again, I understand that wrestling is fictional. I, I 100% understand that I'm not a dummy. What, what, but the, hold but, the phone. You just dropped the bomb on me. Go ahead. I know, right? I know, right? Um, Mother, yeah. Still, still real to me, damn it. Um, uh, you, you know, I, it, it's, but, 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 but you're building this precipice of like, here's how we're going to work. And, and here it is. We're, we're basing it off of fight club. Aren't you happy? Like, no man. Like it nope. was written, you know, kind of with the, the, the tongue in cheek, like, you know, the, 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 the good old boys club. I just, you know, the whole fucking thing stinks to high heaven. Um, it, it, you know, and, and I'm sure that there are guys who like jumped on board immediately. They were like, yeah, this is something new and interesting that are like, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess I said I'd work a show for you, so I'll, I'll come and work a show, but then, you know, I, see hope, I hope decent talent wise up and go, oh dear, we were sold a bag of goods. I'm going to, I'm going to honor my commitment and then GTFO. I not look back. I'm so sad. That, that that we spent this much time talking about control your narrative because this is exactly what they want. This is why they have these bonkers rumors, or, you know, these these bonker rules. This is why they don't have a fucking card listed for next weekend because they want you to fucking talk about them. And I get it. Like, you know, we have fucking 30, what, 30, 40 subscribers, whatever. We got like 15 listeners on the weekly. We're not going to be making and shaking any fucking biscuits over here. But for God's sakes, like, I, I know that we're not, you heard me, making or shaking any biscuits. biscuits. I like um, it. I love to shake a good biscuit. But, but, but you know that we're not, biscuits. but you know that we're not the only ones, is, is, is my point. No. Like, this is, this, no. this is what they're doing and, and, and they're fucking succeeding. So the, 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 the less amount of my time I can give to an inferior product, the better. Anyway, let's talk about WrestleMania. <laughs> oh, speaking of inferior products. <laughs> Thank you. I was about to I'm, say the same thing. I'm dancing. I'm dancing. That was a great segue. I'm dancing. I'm, I'm having fun. Having fun that I'm in a good mood, which is a rare There's, thing. These don't days. Try to, you're not dancing. Don't you're in your feet jiggling I'm, about. I'm, 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 I'm shucking. I'm, I'm shucking and jiving. I, I, oh, shucky ducky jive. quack quack. So you're Booker shucky T now. Ducky quack quack. quack. Where the quack. hell is Poot? Damn it, Poot. Uh, Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> so, WrestleMania is oh, coming up. God. Uh it's 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 a week and a half. My voice still ringing. Sorry, I'll be back again. I first I got a call from my kids' mom. Now I'm getting a call from one of my kids. I'll be back. Phone's ringing, dude. Uh, so I'm giving uh, us the play by play of life, right? Uh, fucking playing the play playing the role of Poot the Bard. We have to. This can all mom. be handled off stream. Every little bit of it. Anyway, um, enough enough with insulting my friends. Um, yeah, WrestleMania is this week, <laughs> next week, next weekend. Uh, seven days. Nope, nine days away. Math is hard. It it sure is, man. I you know, 
Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's tough tonight. Anyway, my point remains that yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? I am there. Uh -huh. a, a small part of me Go. is starting to get excited. Stop! What are you doing? So let me first talk about the 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 thing that's driving me fucking crazy. Okay. Is the Seth Rollins thing? Oh, um, you mean when Cody Rhodes is going to come out at WrestleMania and challenge Seth Rollins? Ba Boom! So that's part two of this. Yes. Part one is the fact that WWE wants us <laughs> to believe that one of the best wrestlers on the planet, one of their four pillars Ooh. of the future, doesn't have a WrestleMania match. I, I don't think that they actually believe that any smart person believes that that's the case then why are they peddling that on their show um it's a storyline uh yeah but i i i think it's insulting i so so why? It, it, it's, it's either it's no, it's no different than the storyline of Kane buried the Undertaker, and the Undertaker is dead literally dead he's dead and gone he's not coming back because on live television this man killed another man by burying him alive. All right, all right, fair point, fair point. But you know, the Undertaker and Kane have always been like metaphysical characters. They've always Are been you like. You trying to tell me this man is not actually dead? You know them and Sting, like Ultimate Warrior, like these guys are larger than life. Like, yeah, okay, but like Seth Rollins is not. He's he's a very grounded individual, um, <laughs> acting. Acting like a fucking lunatic, like oh my god, I don't, I, I don't have a match on WrestleMania. I, I, I'm gonna try and steal KO spot. I'm gonna try and steal AJ Styles spot. Like we that's, got that's two... the gimmick though. Like that's the that's the whole gimmick of I, it. I is just, he's I, so I, desperate, he's trying to steal people's spots. I don't What's like that? it. I, well, I don't like it. Like it or not, I mean, if if and when somebody just jump right in and interrupt, don't you? Yeah, hey. right. Had you been here. Captain uh -oh. phone call. Uh oh, okay. No, re easy. <laughs> uh, easy. I, I, I mentioned that, 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 that that's going to be part two of this discussion. Uh, the, the first part is I honestly feel a little bit insulted that either A, WWE thinks that I believe or that the general fan base believes that, Fed, that Seth Rollins believe. isn't going to have a ma mania match or, or B, oh, that, they're, that they're trying to shovel that crap being like, oh, <laughs> we know. We know that you know that he'll have one, but we're still gonna, you know, we're we're still gonna, you know, get get the get the cat and the mouse out in front of your face and and, and dangle it for you. Like, I, I, well, let me let me let me say this: How wonderful beef would beef would would drop a deuce? Like he would lay an egg, but I would be just incredibly tickled, pink, ecstatic if they if Vince was so crazy. And so fan spiteful that he, that Vince legit went, you know what? We were going to have Seth versus Cody at WrestleMania, but we're going to push Cody to the Monday Night Raw after Mania, and we're legit not going to give Seth Rollins a match at WrestleMania. We're going to bring him down to the ring. We're going to have him say, I don't have a match. Does anybody want to challenge me? Nobody does. We cut camera to the next promo, and Seth leaves. And that's his WrestleMania spot. If Vince was so deranged that he legitimately did that, WrestleMania might be a success for me. Because that uh, might me. be the biggest F you to, the, to the everybody who watches that product ever. And it might be such a big F you that I could get on board with it. So my, th my thought on all that, if I say if and when, because nothing's oh. written in stone. <laughs> But if and when Cody debuts, it would be best to keep it until Mania. It, it's for for the people, for everybody, all you know, all the speculation and everything like that. Oh, we're gonna fight! Yes, come on. Okay, well, good. I'm. I'm yeah, trying no, to, no, I'm trying, you are, I'm trying, I'm you, trying to get my opinion in before the you, next fucking inevitable phone call comes in. So, <laughs> Jesus, man, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, we're all getting so, wound up here. We're all getting so, wound up. So. It would be so? smart. It would be smart, in my opinion, to to leave the debut until Mania because, like, now correct me I if agree. I'm wrong because I I don't watch the week. Oh my god! Shut up! <laughs> I'm not finished. I'm so there happy. We go. Gimmick infringement part two. Um, so, happy. so 
All right, now correct me if I'm wrong. D- did uh, did Rollins do something on Monday Night Raw where he's where um, where he like was kind of doing a sit in sort of thing or whatever? Or has that not happened? Have we talked so, about it? Basically, he challenged KO last week to you know basically have like the Rollins report ever okay. with with Austin and he failed. Okay. This week he challenged AJ Styles for uh, his shot against Edge and failed. Okay. And then at the and then at the end of the night. Uh, like in in the middle of the night, he came out like during a match and was like, "I'm gonna keep talking until I get what I want." And there was a match going on, and then they went to commercial break, and he was gone. I'm like, "Well, that went fast." Okay, so so that's, that's fantastic. Kind of, so so that's kind of dumb that they did it that way. Like it would uh-huh. been, it would have been better if he got laid out or something that instead of just going to commercial break and then he's gone. Yep. Uh, but if they're smart, they would literally <laughs> have that. If they were smart. They would literally ha- open up WrestleMania like night one with Rollins coming down and trying to literally hijack the show. He's he's done the heist of the heist before when he cashed in at WrestleMania, right? Mm-hmm. OK, so he fucking hijacks WrestleMania. He comes down, demands a match, says he's not getting out of the ring till he gets a fucking match, blah, 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 this and that. And then you would have Cody come down. The pop that you would get from that would be amazing because it, yeah, if they, I don't know why or if, you know, if Cody's going to come or not, but if they were going to, you know, if they are dead set on Cody coming, that why they haven't, you know, built it up or anything like that. But, right. But, but, but. (laughs) <laughs> think, of, think of the pop. Think of the <laughs> pop that you would get from the WrestleMania crowd compared to a fucking Monday Night Raw in Jacksonville or whatever. Everybody Pittsburgh? bitched about like Pittsburgh, like one of the loudest nah. wrestling towns. Uh, would you though? Would no, you? I, would you? Would there be Pittsburgh? An incredible pop listen, for Cody? Right, so, L- so, listen, so, hold on. Pittsburgh, all, Pittsburgh can be a little hit and miss sometimes. Oh like, I, no! No, if no, he comes out on Monday night, he's, they're they're gonna go crazy. Here's the thing, though, and 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 I, and I understand and I respect Here's your opinion, take. but I think you're wrong because okay. Oh, I, I, well, you're, this is America. You're allowed to be wrong with your opinion. Go ahead. Go. Uh, <laughs> go. <laughs> Like go on. <laughs> we all know that Cody signed with WWE. Like, Do we? Yes, there was a report last Saturday or Sunday that mm-hmm. said that he signed with WWE three weeks ago. Who who sent that report? I want. Uh, oh, it, it it wasn't it, it it wasn't SRS, but it was somebody else. Anyway, yeah. my point remains that the the word is out. Like the cat has been out of the bag for the better part of a month. That oh, yeah. Cody's going to be showing up. <laughs> why so all right and and so Anticipation, I'll preface, that's why i that's will it. preface that's it <laughs> i will preface this point with a count with with my own counterpoint okay. and saying point that counterpoint. i know that wwe has already gotten paid for peacock and that wwe probably doesn't give two fucks whether one fan watches wrestlemania or 100 million fans watch wrestlemania um i don't know if they have a deal that gives them more money if that's the case. Uh, they are, but, and here's a counterpoint to that counterpoint. Oh, the boy. WWE network is still active all across the world, just not in North America. So, like, they should still care a little bit about the product. My, my point here, before I get the counter and the counter counter, is that oh. when you are building a show, when you're building your biggest show of the year, and this is something talked about a little bit a couple weeks ago you need to have coherent storylines you have to have big picture ideas and you need to build up the product if you have i'll say it a superstar in cody rhodes yes the man left the stardust but he left he became ring of honor champion he challenged for the njpw championship he challenged for the um the nwa championship like he and he went he he founded aew he uh-huh. has, you know, he he's 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 a multi. He, he's involved in a lot of shit right now. He has went out and he has increased his stock tenfold since when he left WWE. So he is coming back a bona fide superstar. If you have someone of that caliber that you know is going to be available for your biggest show of the year, why do you not start that build four weeks in and give two great talkers, two great wrestlers, time? 
and and the ability to build this match on pay per view. Okay. As opposed to, and Can again, so if hold on, if oh. if this were if 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 this were no way out, if this were backlash, if this were not one of your big four pay per views, I am with you 100. percent Debut Cody there, re-debut Cody there, bring him back to build to something at one of your big four shows. But this is the biggest of your big four shows. There should not be any surprise returns on WrestleMania. Everything oh. should be before WrestleMania to be built to WrestleMania. Yes, Ransom. So, should AEW have built up Brian Danielson's debut and Adam Cole's debut? Ha ha. See? Well, all right. They're arguably bigger. Yes. And now I'll, I'll argue until the podcast is over and Poot cuts us off. Yeah. Brian um, Danielson at Shut Up and Adam Cole are bigger deals than Cody Rhodes. Let me refute that. I you will can. say that I, I will say that All Out was built on the re-debut of CM Punk, which they brought him out a month before the show right. and said, hey, we got CM Punk. We're having CM Punk wrestle for the first time sure. in over, what, seven years. Yeah. Like, that was – so they already had – that and and I and I get it. Like, is, is a possibility if they if if they had said, "Hey, we're bringing in Amdrag and and Adam Cole, baby," you know, w would it have been a your right. viewing audience? Maybe, maybe. I I don't know. I, you know. Uh, so yeah, okay. You you caught me. You, you caught me I, in my own and you caught in my tater. own vice. You caught the tater. I I I think I can answer your question, Beef. And whether you agree with it or not, it might not be the answer you want, but it's the only valid reason I can find. Why why wait to debut the uh the all but certain not a hundred percent confirmed but all but certain debut of Cody at WrestleMania to your very own point that you made, forward thinking and everything. Yeah, I know generally you build feuds up to lead and have the payoff at Mania, but then there's inevitably the night after Mania and stuff, which is also a good spot for, for a Cody debut if if the this Seth Rollins wonky ass storyline wasn't, you know, kind of leading to a, a, a potential feud with him or whatever. But you could argue that if he debuts at Mania, OK, like Mania is kind of the reset button. It's the end. It, it's the payoff for, you know, uh, for it's going to be the payoff for Lesnar and Reigns. It's going to be the payoff for lots of other feuds but you need to have something going forward so maybe they're thinking okay you know what we'll do it a slightly askew of what we normally do we'll debut cody there you know it doesn't have to and they don't have to have a full-fledged match like it, it could be a it, it could be a squash just to pop the crowd and get everybody you know raw rod at the fucking beginning of night one or even night two you could drag it out to night two you could have rollins come out on night one demand a match and then have fucking Adam Pierce or Vince or whoever the fuck come out and be like, you know what? We got you in. A, we have you an opponent. They'll be here tomorrow night. And it, yeah, it'll still, be. And it'll no, hold on. Hold on. And it's still <laughs> it's, it's anticipation. It's all whether whether you think you know the outcome or not. Like how many times have we sat? You know, you sat down and watch a movie or play a game or something. And you're like, oh, I know where this is going. But you still watch it because you're enjoying the process. Mm -hmm. Didn't the Hardys so re-debut at WrestleMania without any pump up? This well, is, there's that. And they and they got a huge pop. They got a was, huge ass pop. Uh, two, there was two that, it, that but there was Hold there was, on, before before we get any deeper, I I, I want to cite my sources. Uh, Mike Johnson of PW Insider. PW Insider is usually a pretty reputable source. Rep. Uh, on uh March eighteenth reported that Cody Rhodes officially signed with WWE. Uh, about 10 to 14 days prior to that. So we're talking the beginning of March. They had a full month they could have booked this, is what I'm well, saying. But there might, there might still be other things that the that they other logistical stuff that they're going through that they wanted to make sure that they at least had them at Mania. Like they got them, they got them signed for Mania, but maybe there's other pending legalities and logistics and who knows or maybe all, it's just terrible it. wwe booking it could be that thank too. you it could i'm be, so glad listen, you're here it could be that too regardless it's it'll be a slight change of pace he debuts at mania fucking squashes rollins and then builds a feud leading forward 
after He's, Mania because then you have something to go forward with afterwards. So, so Mania let me also this. isn't this weekend. There's no. still there's still a Raw. Right. So, so he's, he's probably so he's probably going to come out on Monday night in Pittsburgh. So let me ask you this: If that's the case, and it comes out on Monday night in Pittsburgh, so they're not saving his debut for WrestleMania weekend, does that change your your answer? Like, would you have rather them actually built this up for a full month, or are you no. okay with them dropping this? So you're okay with them dropping the surprise five days before? No, I would rather have it happen at Mania. Hon- honestly, if it, if you weren't. As a my, fan, my, I agree. So, 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 as a fan, I agree. But as a man who 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 likes money, <laughs> uh, like to me, I don't see to me the, the money in mm. not advertising like a pretty big fucking get. I I don't understand why you would go through the process of signing him, throwing it all this money at him, and then not advertise it for your biggest show of the year. Uh, let me, I mean, let me so- answer that for you. I'll answer that because I don't think that Vince McMahon or anybody in the WWE sees a great big margin between the people that are going to watch WrestleMania because it's WrestleMania and the people who weren't going to watch but now will because Cody's going to be there. I don't see that being a big enough margin of profit for them to go we need to debut him four weeks in advance we need to build this up real big we need to make a big big stink about it we need to advertise the shit out, shit out of it i don't think that they see that because the people who are going to watch wrestlemania strictly because cody rose is going to date or is going to wrestle there and they know is i don't think a very big i don't think that's a very big audience and I'm not saying that Cody Rhodes is bad. I'm saying that people that are going to watch Mania are already planning on watching. You're not going to get eyes on the product of people who weren't planning on watching it just because they know, oh, they're advertising Cody Rhodes to be there, so I'm going to tune in. Right. And, and to that point, it, like, I, I, as far as big money draws or whatever, I'm, to us, and... In general, in the industry, yeah, Cody's a big fucking deal. But if you look at it through the through the the tinted lenses of the WWE sunglasses, there, um, the money that they're really focusing on, the draw that they're really focused on, is Brock and Roman, and Which Ronda, they should be. Uh, and Ronda and Charlotte. And that's honestly, that's that that's their main focus is the main events of night one, night two, and and the, and the return of Stone Cold. Ronda our, and that's the thing. Ronda and Ronda and Charlotte aren't going to main event night one. Ma- night one is going to be main evented by by the KO show featuring. Get Stone the Cold fuck out of here! No, no. And if it does, that's a fucking mistake. I'm sorry. I yep. one million percent agree, but that's what I'm hearing. Uh, I I honestly hope that's not the case. That that does not th- listen. And and I guarantee you that that that. that Stupid fucking announcer is gonna be like, oh, this is the you know, second year in a row that a women's title match has main evented night one of WrestleMania. This is history in the making, blah, blah, blah. They'll talk it up like it's the main event, but it ain't because the KO show and Austin are going to follow that allegedly. Yeah. So See, now that's, okay, that's more bullshit. speculation into the Stone Cold KO thing. I I've read multiple articles that have reported that Stone Cold has been really training hard and have, has gotten into phenomenal ring shape for this year's WrestleMania. To be fair, I he's... can't imagine that Stone Cold is working to get into ring shape just to do an interview talk show, stunner, beer bash, go home. You don't need to be in ring shape for that. You just need to not, you know, be in heart attack mode. <laughs> and Steve Austin has, you know, if you've watched him over the years, he's not tubbed up. Like, he's still stayed built. Um, I mean, he, he looks like he's jacked more now than he was when he left WWE. But if those reports are to be believed that he's putting in extra time and extra effort to get into ring shape, doesn't that lead you to believe that, oh, he's going to legit be wrestling? Not just out there, Mike, 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 stunner, beer bash, go home. 
Poot, what do you think? I was going to say, to be fair, Stone Cold has kept himself in really, really good shape over the years. Um, he, I, I don't think he wasn't ever ring ready. I just think he knows that he doesn't have to do it anymore. I right. think he was, I think he's just kind of like, no, nope, I could, but I'm not. So I won't. And like he, you know, and, and, and like I, we've said before, I mean, look at what happened with Shawn Michaels. Look at what happened, you know, um, with, you know, like even you could even lump Undertaker and Kane into that and Triple H. Like they just they tried to do it. It was a it was bad. And like people, it's like a decidedly black mark on a on a on like a Hall of Fame career. And I think, though, <clears throat> I think the thing is, though, Austin might look at someone like Owens and go, he could carry me to a good match. Yeah. And and Kevin Owens is more than capable of doing that, of hiding, um, you know, the the flaws and weaknesses and everything like that. Um, listening to the Talk is Jericho podcast was st- with uh, William Regal. He talks about his last match against Brian and how Brian made him look like a rock star. And he was going in there with quite literally a fucked up knee. Like and and Brian like wrapped his leg around the ring post and he said it didn't hurt one bit. He he put on these holds and everything. When you have someone who is able to hide the weaknesses of of a legend and make them look amazing, and knowing that legend can can get themselves over as well, you you're gonna have a good match. But do I think it's gonna happen? I think honestly it's gonna work out the KO show. They're gonna come out there. Uh, I think what's going to happen is Kevin Owens is going to leave Austin laying after a stunner. And he should. Uh, he I, should. I agree. Do that he, night he one and could. have the match on night two. Done. I love you guys. I really do. But let's face facts. Austin's not going to be wrestling. Uh, I'm not sure that he should be wrestling. Uh, I... Listen, all right, I am just about one of the biggest Rock fans you're going to find. I love The Rock. I was vehemently against his return when he beat John Cena at WrestleMania and then uh, had John Cena beat him the following year. I I was vehemently against that because (laughs) he was a part-timer. He had no business being there. Unlike Brock Lesnar, who's a part-timer that shows up, puts in the work, and he's been around. You you can say what you about Brock Lesnar, but he's been around more often than not the last couple of years. Um, the Rock and Steve Austin are using this as a serendipitous payday, uh, which is great for them and, and no slight to either man's career. They both have had legendary careers because they are amazing at what they do. But in this, the year of our Lord, 2022... <laughs> At this, the WrestleMania of our Lord and Savior Vince McMahon, 38, uh, I don't no, think that no. there is a place for Steve Austin or The Rock. And that goes for next year, too. So I, I, I hear what you say, and I think back to The Undertaker beating AJ Styles. Sure. Wasn't a legit match match. It was a, you know, cinematic style match. Sure, The Undertaker hadn't been gone as long as Stone Cold or The Rock. But he also wasn't like Brock Lesnar part-time. At that point, he was maybe once at a WrestleMania part-time. Oh, I agree. But he still, at the end of the day, wound up with the victory over a guy who's there every week and who is also much younger. Mm -hmm. I don't see a difference in that versus Steve Austin beating KO. And I I also hearken back to, uh, no, never mind. I'm I'm good. Go ahead. I I wasn't a fan of that either. I think that the undertaker should have retired after his match with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 20 or 33. I think that should have been 34. I'm, I'm not sure that should have been it. Like he left the hat and gloves in the ring. Yeah. Deuce, done period. I don't care if your Nana's on life support and you need a paycheck. Don't come back to this ring because 
you had a, a great match, you put the right guy over, and that was that. I, you know, that's and that this is the problem inherently with WWE. Outside of uh, Roman Reigns, and, uh, you know, a, a lot of the women are, are, are younger, but, like, outside of a select few, they have a real tough time making new stars because they cling to the stars of the past yep. so much. Stone Cold, The Rock, Mick Foley, uh, Goldberg, uh, uh, you know, uh, at, at, at Undertaker, Undertaker, Triple H, HBK, Ad Nauseam. Kurt yep. Angle. I'll I'll throw one of my personal favorites in there. Kurt Angle. These dudes had a hell of a career. These dudes put on some of the best matches in WrestleMania history. Bar fucking none. But when your time is up, when you are 50 plus and going, yeah, I can work a WrestleMania match, but then I'll have to sit in a tub of ice for the next two weeks to be able to get any mobility. You don't need to come back. WrestleMania will be okay without you. Vince and Kenny and McMahon, mm. your WrestleMania buy rates will be okay without Stone Cold, The Rock, Undertaker, Kane, Kurt Angle, Triple H, and HBK. I promise WrestleMania will continue to endure. But So, uh, just a counterpoint to all this. Yeah, please. I, I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like you're... You're, you're heaping a lot of broadsides here at, at the old rattlesnake. Nothing about this screams Steve Austin calling Vince McMahon going, hey, give me WrestleMania. Hey, give me I WrestleMania. Agree. Hey, I give agree. me WrestleMania. I think this was all Vince McMahon going like, hey, how do you feel about coming back and doing blah? No slight to Austin whatsoever. And, yeah. and I got honestly, with everything that Steve Austin does, I, there, he does not need this money. Right. No. I, I don't think he's doing it for the paycheck. I really don't. And also, if I'm... Because you know KO is a giant fan of Stone Cold. 100%. Like, he's made no, no barbs about that. He's super excited. So, if I'm KO, and I can say, you know what? After decades of this guy being gone, he's going to come back, and let's just say, let's just say hypothetically... We have a match, not just an interview segment, but it's, it's a match. It's not going to go very long. It's not going to be a barn burner, but it's going to be a match. Like five, ten minutes. Even if, even if Stone Cold goes over, the, just KO being able to tout that, I took the very last pin from Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's a hell of a thing. Win, win, win loss records don't mean shit. But to be able to tell your friends, the fans, your children, hey, you see this guy here? I was in his very last match. I was the very last person he pinned. And, I and, took and, the very last stunner in a match with Stone Cold Steve Austin. That think, is a gigantic thing to brag about. I think we're seeing this from two different angles again. I think you're seeing it from the fan perspective, from like, you know, the the, the Kevin, whatever his actual name is, um, not the Kevin Owens perspective. I'm seeing it from a business perspective. Um, and and in, in that, I'm rooting for WWE. I want WWE to have a good product. I want to be able to watch WrestleMania Night 1 and Night 2 and go, you know what? I'm happy. I am fulfilled. I am sports entertained. I want to be happy. I don't want to sit here and critique what they do on a weekly basis. I don't want to sit here and go, man, how good was the Attitude Era? How good was the Ruthless Aggression Era? I don't want to do that. I want to succeed, but at the end of the day, now you're in a situation where either A, Stone Cold, who hasn't wrestled in damn near 20 years, if not more, uh, lays out one of your current big stars, Kevin Owens, with a stunner, just to send the fans home happy, which is probably where it's going to end up. Or B, uh, you have Kevin Owens lay out your biggest 
w one of the two biggest legends of the business. Uh, which I love Kevin Owens, but I don't know that Stone Cold's legacy needs that. So you're in a situation now where you're written into a corner, and and I, 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 I know that Austin and Owens are both very smart individuals, and they both know how to do business. They both see the business like Neo sees the Matrix, man. So I understand that, and I know that they're going to do their best to get a win-win situation here. I. I'm probably just gonna need some convincing on why it was a win-win situation. So I have. Didn't a you just say it though in that one sentence? Stone Cold lays out Kevin Owens with a stunner and sends the fans home happy. Right, There's but your then you win situation right there. Right, but then you have Kevin Owens, the guy who got beat by Goldberg in in a matter of like five minutes, uh, a guy who has had who's had who's had some trouble winning the big one. Get laid out by a guy that hasn't been relevant in twenty years, or that, has, that hasn't wrestled in twenty years and been relevant in about ten. It's an it's an easy play off of that. It's an easy heel play off of that because the next night on Monday Night Raw, KO can come out. Hey, I took a stunner. I got beat by Steve Austin at WrestleMania, but I walked down here on my own two feet. I'm still here. You think Steve Austin can do that? No. Steve Austin is at home, like Beef the Legend said, sitting in an ice bath. Because he wouldn't have been able to come down to this ring. He would have had to ride his quad down. I don't it's think it's going to be a match. Off. I think I, I think I think that you're building yourself up for disappointment, even considering that they're going to have a match. If I were you, and, and, and if you're out there listening, thinking that this may devolve, or hoping that this may devolve into a match, if, if, if I were you, I would temper my expectations. I would expect a great segment by two of the all-time greats. I would expect Austin and Owens to do business for about five to ten minutes, uh, have some real witty repartee, uh, and probably a stunner by one end or another, and a beer bash at one end or the other. I would expect that to be the case. That way you're not disappointed. If if it goes sideways and, you know, um, Adam Pierce comes out and is like, you know what? You got to have a match tomorrow night. Then, you know, great. Then, then you can be excited then. You can go, oh, this is awesome. If it goes down that very evening where the bell rings and it's an actual match, fucking hallelujah. Be happy. Saints be praised. But at the end of the day, I would not put my chip in that favor. Right. I, 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 I hear you, and I agree with that. I just don't know why there are so many reports out there of Stone Cold training to get into ring shape and working out and, and, and getting the cardio. Like, I don't... To get people what's talking. What's the point? To get There's people no talking, point. Like we're, talking, like we're doing right now. I mean, you're aware yeah. that you're 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 aware that this is a football stadium, right? That he's gonna have to like truck down uh, probably thirty, forty yard entrance way before having a five to ten minute promo segment. Like he doesn't want to get down there and that's look the, like he's okay. Winning. No, 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 no. Okay. If that's the case, if that's the case, and you're worried about the long trek to the ring, you're not gonna spend time getting in quote unquote ring shape. To walk down the entrance ramp. If you don't want to do that, you're going to come out on the on the tried and true Steve Austin quad and your way down to the ring, get people all crazy. He's on the quad. He's on the quad. Do circles around the ring. Pop a wheelie. Shoot that shit up on two wheels. Like, that's what you're going to do. You're not going to spend time getting into ring shape to walk to the ring. Like, right. you're just not. I it's not like Steve Austin hasn't driven a quad to the ring before and people have lost their minds for it. I'm I'm That's just very worried. I'm I'm just very worried because and and we're going to talk more about this on the next episode as well, but but I think that this that there are some matches and segments that could absolutely stand out and this could be a decent WrestleMania. I'm worried that you and most of the fan base cuz let's all admit it that, that everybody really loves Austin. With good reason. Again, he's one of the greatest of all time. But at the end of the day, like everybody's getting whipped into a frenzy hoping that there's a match or hoping that it gets physical more than a stunner because of these reports. And I understand that. And yes, let's let's hope for that. But don't put all of the eggs into that basket because 
if if you do that, you're going to end up happening what happened to me and pretty much everybody else last year, where night one was incredible, and then we're all excited for The Fiend, and then The Fiend gets shit on, and then we're all like, well, fuck the rest of this night. You know, fuck, this This is the worst WrestleMania in history. I hate it. This is terrible. And it, it was unremarkable. I don't remember a single thing that happened on night two other than The Fiend getting beat. So I'm, I'm trying to temper expectations. I don't want ev- anybody to be soured on the rest of the Mania card to follow it the next night or the preceding card by what happened in this five to ten minute segment. Right. And, and the thing is, uh, even, even more so going off that point, is, I, and I really, uh, going back to, I really hope that they don't take this, uh, you know, what, what we're talking about. We don't even know if it's going to be a match. You know, we're, it's all speculation right now. I really hope they don't take away um, night one main event spot from Charlotte and Ronda because they absolutely should be in it. Um, they should not be ousted uh, for something that's a, a speculative, maybe five to 10 minute match at most. If you know, with a returning Austin, that that's point one point two, kind of, kind of, uh, to go back into what, um, what, you know, we were talking about all the old heads and everything like that. The old guard. What if, what if Seth Rollins, opponent at WrestleMania is not Cody Rhodes, but maybe being that we're in Texas Goldberg, Gong. Gong. No. I don't know. No. Let's speculate more about it on the next episode. Poot. I smell some Mexican food. Is that a, is that a burrito I smell cooking? No. No. Bye, everyone. See you next episode. Dong. No.